I want to talk about um, one of the key characteristics that shape the life of many, many children in this region, and that's what we've heard also earlier, is the labor movements. And um, children are affected in different ways. They are affected um, that they move with their parents and leave their countries. They are sometimes moving themselves. Um, children as young um, as 17 go across borders to look for other opportunities. Or they're left behind, like this little boy here in Bangladesh, who doesn't remember how his parents look in real life, who only sees them through the phone. He's here and talking to his dad. Um, now, I think it's very important to remember what an immense contribution migrant workers, migrant labor, um, pays to our economies. Um, a study has actually shown that um, after the 2008 financial crisis, it was remittances from migrants that softened the impact of the financial crisis in central countries such as Philippines and Myanmar. Because while investment went down, the money that the migrants sent home did not, or just by a little fraction. So the migrants, despite the difficult uh, economic difficulties, kept on sending money homes to their families and supported them, and thus had a huge benefit to those countries. Sorry, I forgot to click to the next picture. Um, and, and despite, or if we think of all those benefits that we have, we have to remember that all opportunities and benefits are just one side of the cone. On the other side are the risks and the hardship. And unfortunately, I feel that a lot of those risks are on the children's shoulder. Um, it's children who bear the risk. Um, it's, um, in the Philippines, it's an estimated 10 to 20 percent of children who grow up with one or two of the, uh, without one or two of their parents who grow up without um, having that loving parental care that is a basic, basic need of children. Um, many of the tens of thousands of Indonesian young women um, who leave Indonesia to come to work, for example here in Malaysia in the IT sector, are suddenly exposed to a enormity of risks, such as sexual abuse, um, harassment, etc. And obviously, children who move with their parents often are, as we heard, are undocumented and thus deprived of education and, um, and basic health care. Now, governments around the world are, and we heard this morning, for example, from the Malaysian government, um, they do allow us to, to support children. This is a picture of Indonesian migrant children in Malaysia um, who previously were not attending school and where the Indonesian government went in and set up a school. But it is my firm belief that companies can, in the way they operate, in the way they manage their employees, that businesses can contribute significantly to the fate and to improve the fate of children affected by um, the migrant movements. And I'm going to make a couple of examples. Um, Many of the pictures I'm going to show you in these examples. So I'm not going to be, despite this is a high-level panel, I'm going to be very low-level and very practical. Many of the pictures in these examples are taken from China because that's where we traditionally worked more. But many of the things that I'm going to talk about are we are in the process to um, work um, with um, companies in Malaysia and the Southeast Asian regions, such as Myanmar, um, to, to start implementing those as well. And I hope if I have similar um, sharing experience in a couple of, or next year, I have much more pictures from this region than only from China. So, one of the very practical things that we've seen companies doing, that is not NGOs doing, it's the companies who do those. So this is a factory who engages trainers for their migrant working parents, migrant parent workers, um, to support them on how they can be a real presence in their children's life, despite being thousands of kilometers away. Because right now we can't change their situation. It's a fact. They don't see their children. And um, in classes such as the, what you see here on the pictures, both mothers and fathers learn very practical skills. How can I talk to my child? Um, what is the... Um, how can I keep a conversation up? Because they say, after a while, there's nothing more to say. I say, have you had dinner? The child says, yes, and that's it. Um, um, and so they learn how to deal with that in those kind of situations. This is, again, a picture of a factory who decided to create a uh, daycare center for children and is now and lobbying of schools around them to accept migrant children, and thus has brought together 200 children with their families. This is a picture of um, an, another manufacturer who is supporting young workers on how to become professionals, um, on how to um, protect themselves, but also know how to move ahead in an environment such as factories. 
And um, this is my last picture that I want to show um, today. And it's just um, this, this the, the girl here, her name is Vivian. Um, that's the name she gave herself. Um, she started to work in a factory when she was 15. And she's actually and then managed with, um, with a little bit of support from the right um, human resources in her factory, um, started uh, to get some interest and now have helped her to get night classes. She's on the way to become um, part of the HR administration. And her story um, is now shared on a WeChat app that we have companies who have supported this app that we share with a lot of young workers um, all around China, where we have photo stories of young factory workers um, and how they made it. And not, not from rags to riches stories of people who became millionaires. Very, very basic stories, how they managed to keep positive, how they managed to build a life, to create a family, and just to make a step ahead because we see so much hopelessness um, around um, young, young migrant workers. And this is kind of to counter this and show them there's another way. So um, she's now become part of the story of in her mobile app, and other people get inspired by her. So that's just a very few examples.